Could bonds be the new stocks? Consider fixed income solutions from TriStar Financial, specializing in bonds and Roth IRA conversions. Find out at TriStarFinancial.us and listen to What's Working Now, weekday afternoons at 4 on CNN 650 Radio News, presented by TriStar Financial. The following took place on Sports Radio 610 in Houston, Texas, USA. Earth. From the Bud Light Studios, you are listening to Sports Radio 610. Welcome back. It's getting crazy in here. It's good to have you along. We want to see you out here at Ref's Sports Bar and Grill, 249 at Luetta. We're here until 7, but actually 11. We started our broadcast at 2. We're going to continue broadcasting live here until 11 p.m. Sean Bajani and Barry Warner will take you into the evening hours with Robert Hensley, Rich Lord, and we are joined now by John McClain, who is, uh, has carved out a little spot for himself here in a very popular place, Ref Sports Bar and Grill. There's a good crowd here already. You need to come on out here and join the fun. John, how are you today? I'm doing great. I have not been anywhere where there were so many good-looking women since the Super Bowl in Miami at South Beach. Good point. I mean, this is the best-looking group of referees I've ever seen. If you don't know, the waitresses here all wear the black-and-white striped referee outfits, and they uh, complement those outfits very nicely. I just got called for unnecessary roughness. <laughs> hey, John, you know who's in the house? Who's in the house? I mentioned this a few minutes ago. You remember Frank Schultz from University of Houston? Frank Schultz, a long-time SID in Houston. Vice Slamma Jamma SID. He's yep. in the house. Is that right? Yeah, it was good to see him. So how are you today? You're keeping busy in advance of the draft, I assume. I've been working on the draft around the clock. Texans just signed Rashad Butler and Chris White to their tenders. They're both restricted free agents. And uh, I've done so many mock drafts, I can't keep up with them. And... Uh, by the way, Taylor Mays, I have going to the Cowboys with a 27th pick because they need a free safety. Texans, I have taken Ryan Matthews because C.J. Spiller will be gone when they make the 20th pick. Well, John, of course, has been covering the NFL for more than 30 years, and it's interesting you mentioned Taylor Mays because we are told that he is on the phone line as we speak. Very you- interesting. Yes. Huh? What a coincidence. USC safety Taylor Mays joining us here on Sports Radio 6. And Taylor, you're on with a big group. It's John and Robert, and I'm Rich. We appreciate you being with us. How are you today? What are you, are you at the restaurant using some hot wings? Yes, Absolutely. you can. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your roommate? Oh, oh, I don't know. Probably doing some push-ups. He's probably over doing the MMA. Are you doing the MMA with him yet? No, I haven't did it yet. I watched him do it. I watched him wrestle. Uh, I know. I know he wrestled Chuck Liddell the other day. And who got the best of that? He said Chuck Liddell was strong, so I don't know. <laughs> what do you think about that, Taylor? Brian, working, Brian, of course, is very popular here. As you know, your former roommate at SC. What do you think about him taking that regime that he's doing with Jay Glazer and Chuck Liddell and Randy Couture out in Hollywood? You know, he. Uh, I think it's good. I think it's good that he's out there doing that cross-training. And, and Bush, he's so educated on, on working out and what he needs to do, so... Um, I know he's getting the most out of it. I know he's not just doing it to do it to, you know, to, for the looks or anything like that. I know he's getting a lot out of it, and, you know, I'm, I'm sure it'll pay off for him. Well, we had one of your teammates on a little bit earlier in the show. Everson Griffin was with us, and we were talking a little bit about uh, how much of a microscope uh, and spotlight you guys are under this time of year with so much speculation about the draft and so many different people weighing in on evaluating you guys and your talents and so forth. You know, if, if you look at even some of the most respectable opinions that are out there, uh, Taylor, I think it's generally believed that had you come out last year, you might have been a top five, maybe top ten pick. And most people now are projecting you as a guy that perhaps, as John just said, is going to go toward the back end of the first round. Uh, do projections like that bother you at all, that, that it seems like in the, in the span of just one year, uh, people are viewing you, viewing you uh, actually pretty significantly differently than they did a year ago? No, not at all, because, you know, I, I know right now that I'm a better football player than I was this time last year. And, um, you know, you, you said, like, John, you say John. He, um, you know, I don't I don't think he's watching enough film on me to really know who I am as a football player and what I can do. And, you know, I, I, I wouldn't listen to somebody like a, you know, uh, um, 
you know, news writer or something like that, or a mock draft, I listen to the, you know, a coach or a general manager, and they would tell me something completely different than what I hear from people, you know, that, that are sports writers. So what what are you hearing from those folks? Where, where do you think you'll go? Well, I mean, they don't tell. You know, I hear I hear from the, um, you know, from you know, writers that you know, that I'm not able to move side to side, that I that I that I can't back that or that I can't do this. And then when I talk to the general managers, they tell me that they think, you know, that, I, that and they, even the head coaches, the DB coaches, they tell me that I move, you know, a lot better than they could, that, that, that they think I'm out there moving like corner when I, you know, going through my drills and this and that. So it's, it's two different things. And obviously, I've got to listen to people that I know are going to coach me or potentially coach me. And so you, you can only let it go so far. Um, it's just frustrating because I feel like a lot of times people make, they say things without knowing what they're talking about. And um, or they say something because somebody else says it, but uh, you kind of just got to block that out and just focus on what you control and and just listen to the people that really um, are the decision makers, not the people that are not decision makers. How would you feel about going to the Cowboys because they need a free safety? I, I would. I wouldn't. I love. I don't. You know, it doesn't matter to me. I just want to. I, I love. I just got back from Valley Ranch two days ago, um, and I love Coach Coach Maxey and Coach Phillips and. You know, I love what that organization stands for. So, um, you know, it doesn't matter. And that's a good football team also. You know, you go to a good football team, you get, you're able to win games. And, you know, that, 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 would, that would be unbelievable. Taylor, can you get a feel when you travel to meet with these teams? Uh, you know, if they are interested in taking you, do they, do they let you know or get some insight into what they're looking for? Or... Is it pretty much like when you meet with them at the, the draft combine when it's, uh, you know, it's a little bit more, you know, they're asking a lot of players the same questions? Yeah, you know, I, uh, you, get, you get definitely a lot more insight, a lot more insight because you're hanging out with them, you know, face-to-face. It's not a 15-minute, um, you know, meeting where you, where you hear a whistle. It's like a, you're hanging out with them, you know, at the facility and this and that, and it's a lot different. And I got a very – I had the same vibes. It's not a lot more, you know, when I was on these trips that I took than when I was uh, at the combine. You know, it was a lot better, and I got very good feelings from these teams, and I'm very confident in what they said to me, you know, made me think that, you know, okay, obviously this is completely different than what, you know, is projected from what other people say. How many teams have you visited, and uh, of those, I guess, which ones do you think are likelihoods that you might, that might pick you? I think all of them would. They all. I mean, I, when I talked to them, they said, "Man, if you were there, we would love to take you." You know, and they said that's that's what the feeling was. That feeling really was from all the all the teams I visited. I visited. Uh, I went to Cincinnati, I went to Kansas City, I went to San Francisco, and I went to Dallas. So and Pete Carroll didn't have you come up to Seattle. Is that uh, does it bother you a little bit that your old coach no. didn't? <laughs> yeah. No, nah, because you know, there's there's no point. You know, he knows me better than anybody else knows me. You know, I don't have to show anything. Of, you know, you know, he knows. I don't think. I don't think they interviewed any USC guys. That's interesting. Well, Taylor, I got to ask you, uh, basically plain and simple, how fast are you? Because at the at the combine, originally a time of 4.24 came out, and you're 2:30. I mean, that was yeah. an incredible time, and then it was adjusted uh, to 4:43. What's your best 40 time? Well, 4:43 was wrong. The four four three was wrong, and they admitted to me that they had a malfunction on my time. So, you know, they told me that I was somewhere between where, where Jacoby ran. I think Jacoby, well, I don't know what Jacoby ran, and but, but it's behind Jacoby and in front of Trent and Holiday. Um, you know, I know I ran a four two five at USC two years ago, electronic. So I, I would say I'm in that range. You know, I, I was surprised when they tried to change my time and tell me four four three. That was Real frustrating because it wasn't fair. Well, that's got that's got to bug you a little bit if the if the reported time in your forty at the combine was wrong because let's face it that's dollars. Yeah. I mean the forty time it, probably yeah. shouldn't mean as much as it does, but that's but dollars, it is it not? Yeah, it's, see, for me being a big safety, it's, it's a lot of money. It's the difference between going, I think you know later in the twenty some picks to the mid to the mid round, you know, or even to the top twelve picks. It's, it's a huge difference, but. But also with that said is, you know, the NFL, when I talk to the, the coaches and, you know, the, the, the GM, they don't go by that time that's the electronic time because they know that it can be wrong. All these, most of these teams, I really would say all 100% of them, have me at the hand time anywhere.